what is going on guys and welcome back to the next iteration in this davinci resolve tutorial today we have a very exciting course where we are going to be learning about 3d planes and 3d renders now you guys see me reference this with the shapes in one of our few videos back but today we're going to really get into a deep dive on why you would want to do that so first off before we get into the course why do we need to learn about 3d planes and renders well the reason why is because sometimes when you bring in third party things into your video clip like to track it on top of something else, it doesn't look really integrated. It doesn't even look like it was part of it. It almost looks like it was added and the audience is like, hey, uh, why is this weird thing in on top of the video? So you don't want your audience to think that. You want them to believe that it was part of the original footage and that was what we call compositing, okay? You put something from a third party into your video clip in such a way to where it looks like it was part of the original video that it looks real right so this is going to help you with compositing and it's going to make you be a significantly better editor all right now let's go ahead and jump into the software and let's get our hands dirty here so here we have a video clip that we're going to be working with which is of this woman looking at this green screen um you know laptop with some tracking dots on here and obviously we're going to need to track those dots um in the next video we're going to be learning about green screening and the stuff like that and how to remove that green screen but for now we're going to be just doing 3d planes and tracking and if you're wondering where i got this clip i will put a link in the description down below i believe i believe i downloaded it off of Envato elements uh, if i'm not mistaken so i'll put that in the description all right so let's go ahead and get started and let's get learning so we're going to go ahead and go over to the fusion page and now we have got this into fusion here we have our video in and our video out and it undergoes nothing right that's why we have pretty much this up here let's go ahead and go to one screen so we can make this a lot easier and i want my output to be up here on the screen okay so now what we need to do is my recommendation to you guys is to always track your stuff first okay if you're going to put anything on your video go ahead and get all your tracking done and get all the tracking data that you can use to kind of track and keep up with things while it moves okay let's watch the video right now you'll see that this does move quite a bit so it's kind of shaky and uh, you'll see that um, it, it's not going to be it's going to be an easy video clip to track because of those tracking points on it okay that's why having those are really nice and if you're ever making a movie and you know you're going to be tracking something uh, the best rule of thumb is to put tracking points on whatever you want to track it will help you later in the end and you'll have the edit in mind when you're shooting and it'll make you significantly better all right now let's go ahead and get this going let's get this show on the road so let's go ahead and bring in our tracker so i'm gonna go ahead and click on the media in i'm gonna hit control and then space on the keyboard and as you can see i already have my tracker here i'm just going to type in tracker we're going to hit planar tracker as we learned in our previous video and then while we have that we need to pick these points okay so i do want to track obviously this uh laptop screen so i'm going to put a point like up here i'm going to put a point down here cool thing about screens is they're very you know uh, symmetrical so it's really easy to track them they're not like irregular shapes and you don't have to use so many tracking points to get it going okay and then we're going to go ahead and click on that and now we have our selection very nice there we have it now we're going to go over to here to where it says um track forward so we're going to go ahead and hit track forward and as you guys can see it is now tracking our video clip forward so while it does that you can actually see those points are really saving this clip uh significantly right you guys can see how it's kind of sticking to that that's why having those crosshairs is actually really really nice so i'm actually going to zoom out a little bit so you guys can see that it really is in fact tracking so if we go back by using our playhead right here by clicking on it and dragging it to the back i'm going to hit play and you can see it sticks on there pretty pretty good um yeah it's it's sticking on there really really well okay all right so we're gonna go ahead and bring this back to beginning and oh now that we have this tracking data let's go ahead and go over to our create planner transform and let's go ahead and take that data and let's just kind of put this up here somewhere okay all right so now that we have this tracking data right here we want to actually track something on top of it so we're going to just pull some text in right now this is going to be really really nice and uh, actually before we get that let's go ahead and bring in a merge node to put that on top of everything and let's just see where our text lands right now so let's go ahead and type in um test all right let's kind of do that and let's move our test to the middle here 
Let's make it a little bit bigger. Kind of like that. And we want that on the middle of our screen. Okay. Now, the natural inclination is to take this text and run it into your planar transform and merge it back in on top of everything. And then you're good, right? All right. Let me show you guys what, what's wrong with it and how it will look. Okay. Let's go back to the software real quick. So we're going to take this and do what, like I said, the natural inclination is to put it. Oh, yeah. Here, put it into our tracking data, right? And then put it on top of our video. Boom. There it is. And watch it. You watch it and voila. La. It's working, right? It's working. It's, it's stuck to the screen. Okay. Yeah, we did something. All right. Let me show you guys what's wrong with it. You guys see this word test. It doesn't quite sell to me because if you notice, this test is like flat okay it's flat but the, the laptop if you notice if you look back at the laptop the laptop is at an angle you see that you see how the perspective is different so it's at an angle so how in the world are we going to get our text to be at an angle or be in the same perspective of our laptop all right this is where the 3d plane comes in let me show you guys what we're gonna do okay so first off we're gonna make our th or take let's just disconnect all of this you know let's not delete anything let's just disconnect let's put our tracking stuff over here for a second okay and we don't need this over here either let's just kind of put this down let's make this a little neater neater and let's just put this down here for a second okay so right now we're just focusing on text what we need to do is we need to get this text to be in the same plane or the same perspective as our laptop screen. So how do we do that? Well, now we're going to go over to some of these crazy 3D tools that we talked about early on in the introduction of this section of the course. You see what it says image 3D plane or plane 3D. Go ahead and bring that in. Okay, don't get afraid when you see the word 3D, guys. Don't freak out. I got you. Okay, I promise. It's not too bad. And remember, anytime we do, you know, a 3D thing, we need to have some type of 3D renderer as well to put that onto the screen. So we're gonna need both of these, okay? Why are we using a 3D plane? What are we doing is basically taking the text and it's almost like we're putting that onto a plane, okay? And then we're gonna control where that plane is gonna be, you know, the 3D axis of it, okay? So it's gonna make a lot of sense when we get into here. All right, now let's get in there and let's take a look at it. So now we're gonna go ahead and connect this to our image plane 3D. We're gonna connect our image plane 3D to render it so that we can see it but actually you probably wonder well why why don't i see anything up here well that's because we didn't connect it to our output so if you disconnect this and we plug this into our output boom now you can actually see our text okay you guys see that you guys picking up what i'm putting down and if you want that to be on top of everything you guys already know the drill put our merge back into our output right here okay and then we're going to connect that into our merge so that all that 3D stuff is on top of our video. Okay. So let's kind of move this around. Move this around. And voila. Now we have a little bit of a neater uh, setup here. Okay. It is now in a 3D space. So we can actually do a lot of cool 3D things. So we can do that by simply clicking on the image plane 3D. So let's go ahead and do that. So if you click on your image plane 3D right here. Okay, you go up here to the top right corner. You see it says transform. Click on transform. All right. You see how you got this little graphic here? You don't need any materials or anything like that. You know, that that's some other 3D stuff we'll talk about in a far distance in a, in a video not near you. <laughs> but um, what we're going to do is go over to um, rotation. Okay. And you know what? Let's go ahead and learn about all these. Translation is really cool. This translation actually corresponds to how close it is to the camera and how far back it is, I believe. So let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, that's exactly. You see how when I move this number up, when I click into this space and then drag to the right, you see how this kind of goes almost to the point where it gets so close to the screen that it it passes our camera. That's exactly what it is. It's getting so close to the screen, just like it is in real life. Imagine in real life, my hand is so close to the screen, and then all of a sudden, boom, it passed the camera. So the same thing is what's happening here in DaVinci Resolve with this image plane 3D. It put the text on an, a 3D plane, so now we can actually do a lot of things with it, okay? But 
In this case, all we need to do is actually just get our perspective right by messing with our dials over here. And I do think it should be a little bit closer to the screen actually. I do think that should be a little bit bigger because it was quite small. Then we're gonna go over to rotation, okay? And we're gonna fix our rotation a little bit. Okay, whoops, I went a little bit too much there. And of course you can do a lot of this in the uh, image plane 3D. I don't know why um, you would want to do that in the text. Some of this you can do, but I'm going to show you where the, the 3D uh, plane is significantly superior and it's coming up right now. So um, what I recommend doing is go ahead and fixing your rotation. So we're going to go ahead and click into here and we got our rotation. Good stuff, right? Now there's still a lot more. Um, actually, it looks like it's slightly, I guess that's fine. It's, it's a little off to me. It should probably come over just a little bit. But uh, that's fine. You can actually probably use your X to do that. You can just move your X right here so you don't really have to deal with, you know, the text stuff. And that looks about right to me. Totally oh, eyeball on this. All right, cool. Now there's one last thing. You guys see that the text is actually still flat. So this is where the rotation comes in on the Y axis, because we're on the Y axis now. We're gonna turn this text around the Y axis, okay? And so we're gonna rotate the text around the axis. And then you have your X, and you could also take your text and then tilt it back and forth as well on the X axis, okay? So just wanna make sure you guys get that. All right, now what we're gonna do is we are gonna go ahead and go over to here and we're gonna rotate it on our Y axis. And notice as I do that, you see how it actually tilted the tick? Now it looks like it's going back into the video, right? Or into the screen. But that's not what we want. We want the opposite. We want it to tilt forward to us. Now this looks a bit better, significantly better. And it looks like we might have matched this. So basically use your, wow, that's significantly off. But you can use your leading lines. You see how the screen kind of kind of comes across here, and this kind of comes across not quite parallel to it. So you basically want to get that as parallel as possible. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and keep playing around with this dial to where it is parallel, and that looks pretty close, actually. And then we're gonna mess with this. We're gonna fix our rotation and voila we now have a test text on the screen and you know what's happening to me is it just me or is it the longer i look at the word test and the more wrong it looks so your eyes start doing all this kind of crazy stuff when you're doing uh effects and all kinds of stuff you your eye and your brain actually starts to compensate so it's actually really good to kind of step away and don't look at what you've been working on for a second and then kind of look back at it. You know, get yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea or whatever. Look back at what you've done and then see it with a fresh pair of eyes. You can really see the truth of what you're working on. All right. Now that that is all working, one last step, and that is to simply connect in our tracking data. So we're going to go ahead and connect that into here, connect that back to our merge and voila. Now you can see that it is off by a little bit because our tracking data has been inputted, right? So all we need to do is just simply click on our image plane and just move this back accordingly. The better practice would have been to actually do this with the tracking data on it so that you know for a fact it doesn't need to be adjusted. So you guys definitely do that move forward, but it wasn't too much of an adjustment. So now if we play our video, you can now see that this literally looks like it is on the screen. Okay. All right, guys. Yeah, that is pretty good. That is pretty good. Okay. Ooh, that was a lot, guys. We learned a ton of different things. Um, we learned a lot more about tracking. We learned more about the 3D plane and render, or we learned about it in general. Um, there is a lot you can do that really unleashes a lot of different things for you and i think that now we can get into with knowing this information you could do a lot of different things you could do like a lot of vfx overlay stuff now with tracking and you can put it into the right perspective now you just need to learn some compositing tips and things like that but other than that you've got pretty much everything you need to do all that jazz okay
So the last and final thing on the list that we can be learning in Fusion uh, for now, until further ado, until we get through the deliver page, uh, we're going to get into green screening and Luma King and stuff like that and Delta Key um, and all that. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoy that and I will see you guys in the next video. You guys take care. We'll see you.